Good morning, tribe. Hope you guys are having a great week so far. Happy Tuesday. Uh, today we're talking to Gina about um, cannabis nursing. What is it like to be involved in that stage of um, or that area of nursing? So a lot of you guys showed a lot of interest. So I'm happy to have Gina on here with us. So we'll talk to her and see what she has to teach us. Hi, Gina. Hi. Thanks for joining us on your time, uh, giving us some of your time. So how long have you been in the field of nursing in general? Um, I've been a nurse for eight years. Okay, now. great. And, and how I've long have you been in cannabis? Cannabis nurse I've been for four. Okay, great. So what did you do prior to your role as a cannabis nurse that helped you prepare for this role? I was, I started out my nursing career in long-term care, dementia, Alzheimer's, and mm -hmm. I transitioned into orthopedics and then pain management. Um, I, think I think all of those areas kind of prepared me for the cannabis aspect of it. Um, there was a lot of pain management issues and a lot of abuse of narcotics that I was seeing in my nursing career. So huh. it was a really good segue into alternative medicine. That's great. So uh, you kind of already answered this, but what made you choose to go this path? Well, the reason, the real reason why I chose this path is because I was going through some personal stuff as a nurse that I was needing alternatives for. Um, I was diagnosed early, early um, stages of cervical cancer. Okay. And I was just kind of preparing myself for what if what if it, you know, metastasizes? What if, you know, what if they can't get it all with surgery? Um, so my son and I started doing some research and we found that CBD helped to kind of contain and slow down cancer cell growth. Mm -hmm. And so the hospital that I was working at, I couldn't get my medical cannabis card because they had just fired a PA for medical cannabis. She tested positive. Um, she was a veteran that used cannabis for her um, PTSD at night and they fired her. So I knew that getting my medical cannabis card was not an option at that point. Um, mm -hmm. So we started doing some research. We found a company. I ordered a couple of cases of CBD oil and I also got my father on it because he was a chronic pain patient. And I said, you know, dad, it's not going to hurt. I mean, what's the worst thing? It doesn't work, right? And we just are back to square zero again. So mm -hmm. he tried it. I tried it. And it worked amazingly for both of us. I still had to get surgery. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't have to go through, knock on wood, um, chemo or radiation. Um, it was contained. It didn't grow and didn't metastasize any further than my cervix. So, um I thought, you know what, this is something we need to, we need to look into this. We need to start, um, yeah, I need to get this out to people. So I started peddling CBD oil from the trunk of my car. Wow. <laughs> and I just dove in head first into it. And I, I just found that it was an answer to a lot of patients, um, problems. And, um, so that's kind of how I got started. So are you still currently just working for your, uh, on your own? Or are you with a clinic, a CBD clinic? How does that work? Um, so I opened up, I opened up um, a store, a storefront. I opened up an online store first, then I opened up a storefront. And we do nursing consulting there. Um, so patients kind of come in and we do free nursing consulting. Um, we don't ever um, diagnose or treat. So... We're dealing with supplements, um, so we just recommend, here's a regimen for you, just like taking your vitamins, um, your complex. Um, so we go through the medication list that they provide us. Um, we're all HIPAA certified, so we go through all of the protocols just like you would in a medical clinic. Um, but we don't, we don't diagnose or treat. We just recommend products that could help with alleviating or mitigating some of the symptoms that they're currently suffering from. Okay. So do you feel like this is a good avenue for a new grad to start? 
No, I think that you need to have a well-rounded um, education um, and patient experience to know and understand um, what's going on with the patient. So I always recommend our new, our new nurses to get a well-rounded experience with med surge because that kind of goes through everything. Um, and then if they want to specialize, they can. But if you have a good foundation of med surge, then the doors that will open will be more so than being um, just strictly into one specialty. I think cannabis medicine, though, fits in any specialty that you decide to go into because you're going to see as cannabis becomes more and more um, legalized with other states coming on board, you're going to you're going to face that in the hospital setting. Sure. Um, I was facing it in the orthopedic setting um, where we had a lot of cannabis patients that were coming in and were wanting their medication. But, you know, with the legalities in the hospital, it was really hard to accommodate. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand and know what cannabis is, how it works in the body and how it's beneficial to the patient to um, have them continue their regimen while they're in the hospital if it's allowed by the hospital. Do you want to teach us a little bit about those things that you just mentioned, about what it is and how it works in the body? Sure. So our every single one of us has an endocannabinoid system. Our endocannabinoid system is known as the regulator because it regulates all of our systems in our body, from our central nervous system to our cardiovascular, um, musculoskeletal, um, digestive, immune. So all of the systems are affected by the endocannabinoid system. We have receptors. Um, the most common are CB1 and our CB2 receptors that open up when we ingest cannabinoids from cannabis or cannabinoids from other plants. They respond to the phytocannabinoids that are inside the plant. So phyto is, is plant-based, endo is internal. So we create um, internal cannabinoids like our anatomide, which is known as our bliss molecule. Um, we, when we ingest cannabinoids, we unlock those receptors. And they're different receptors. They're not the same receptors as our opiate receptors. So mm -hmm. they help to regulate, um, send signals, control inflammation. Um, so once you start consuming cannabis on a regular basis, whether it's hemp-based cannabis or medical cannabis, um, you start feeding that endocannabinoid system and it brings homeostasis back into your body. So with regular use of um, cannabinoids being um, taken internally, you can start regulating your blood pressure, your blood sugars, um, the inflammation, which makes up about 90% of all of our ailments um, is just our inflammatory response mm -hmm. to things. So you'll start to see that your body starts to become um, balanced and a lot of our clients that are taking blood pressure medications or um, blood sugar medications, um, they tend to have to take a journal because their medications and their blood pressure start to self-regulate. So then mm -hmm. they go back to their doctor so they can adjust those uh, medications. So you mentioned um, hemp versus medical grade cannabis. Can you explain to everyone the difference in those two things? Sure. Really, the only difference between hemp-based cannabis and medical cannabis is the THC content. So the THC content in hemp is 0.3% or less. It's just enough to be um, beneficial, but not psychoactive. So is it still legal to uh, drive, come to work, those kinds of things? On hemp-based um, CBD, Yes, in some states they have um, put some regulations on CBD. So there's several states now that um, we can't sell to. Um, I always recommend starting your CBD oil at night and kind of filling out what your response is to CBD. CBD sometimes in higher amounts can make you drowsy. So I don't recommend driving a vehicle um, or operating heavy machinery until you know how your body is going to respond to it, just sure. like with any medication. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our viewers asked, does CBD work as well without the THC? Yes and no. Um, so cannabis is meant to be whole plant. So when you start extracting 
things away from the plant, you start taking away the benefits of the plant. So CBD has a therapeutic threshold. There's a research out there. It's called the bell shape theory. Mm -hmm. And it showed that CBD isolated by itself had a medical benefit or medical threshold of up to 2,400 milligrams. Um, after that, it just kind of stopped working. It just needed more of the terpenes, more of the other cannabinoids that help to um, help the synergistic effect of it. So whole plant-based medicine is always better, um, but there is some therapeutic um, properties to just isolated CBD. Great. Um, another viewer is asking, I was watching another podcast by an MD. He stated that with moderate use, it can be an anti-emetic, but with chronic use, it can do the opposite and cause nausea and vomiting, which is actually becoming super popular in our ERs these days. So how do you know, um, sorry, how do you know what to recommend? Is our question. So when we're talking about medical cannabis, high amounts of THC to a novice user is going to make them sick. It's going to make them nauseated. It's going to give them tachycardia and they are going to vomit. Um, so you always start out um, slow. And I always use, um, there's a, a serving recommendation calculation that I use for CBD products. Um, it's kind of, this is kind of like a two part answer because you need to kind of know what your CBD recommendation is going to be and then you can incorporate your THC because CBD is an antagonist to THC. So if you take mm -hmm. too much THC, you can bring down that psychoactivity with CBD. So I always start with the CBD recommendation of 0.25% times their body weight and that'll give them their daily CBD intake. And it's just, it's not, um, it's not an exact calculation for everybody but it's a good starting point. You can always go up or down, titrate up or down, depending on their response to that. And then starting with THC, I would start with two and a half milligrams of THC and then slowly increase um, the THC as you can tolerate it. Um, different ailments are gonna require different amounts of THC. So, I mean, that's a whole other series on dosing. But the reason why we're seeing so many people ending up in the ER is because they're over medicating. Mm -hmm. um, and when you over medicate, it's a horrible experience because when you eat an edible, it does two things. One, it takes up to two to four hours to hit your system, depending on how much food you have in your stomach. You have to process it and metabolize it into the liver, but then it converts again from um, Delta eight to Delta 11. So you get just that much more psychoactivity when you're taking edibles. So a new patient that goes into a dispensary that has I, no idea what they're talking about and eats a 100 milligram candy bar or a 200 milligram THC candy bar, they're going to get very sick. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what we're seeing in the hospitals is the overconsumption. It's not that it's chronic use. Um, it's just that they're taking too much. And that's our endocannabinoid system will tell us when we have reached our threshold. And that's when you start seeing the adverse reactions like the nausea, the vomiting, um, diaphoretic. Um, those are all responses that are triggered by too much THC. Yeah. Uh, so another viewer asks, is there a difference in edible cannabis versus smoking it for medical purposes? Yes. So the... The edible cannabis, like we just talked about, it's going to, one, convert to Delta 11. So it does a little bit of conversion. It lasts longer in the system. Um, it takes up to two hour, two to four hours to hit your system and can last anywhere between eight to 14 hours, depending on how you metabolize it. So edibles and capsules are a great um, go-to for long-term coverage. Um, smoking cannabis is, hits your system within minutes, but it only lasts about 90 minutes. Um, so mm -hmm. you'll need to smoke more um, and have more frequent um, inhalation to cover chronic pain. But it's great for PRN, for breakthrough pain, for breakthrough um, um, problems if you're, you know, seizures or pain. 
um, anxiety, it's a great go-to for quick um, relief. All right, great. Um, let's see, let me get back to my list of questions. Um, is there any, uh, how was the experience transitioning to cannabis nursing and any insight or advice? Um, for me, the transition was very easy. Um, it was scary being, going from a hospital setting into being self-employed. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I held on to my nursing jobs in the hospital and long-term care settings, um, until I just couldn't physically work all of them. Um, it was my safety net because getting that paycheck every single day was, you know, that's, that's our safe zone. When you, when you become self-employed and you go into consulting, you are relying on yourself to bring home that income. Um, but the transition itself going from, from a hospital setting into, or Western medicine into Eastern medicine, I guess is a better way to say it, a more holistic nursing approach was easy for me because mm -hmm. I just, I just support that anyways. I'm not a huge, uh, I'm not a huge fan of pharmaceuticals, even though I'm a nurse. Um, I think that they're overused and I don't think that we do a lot of follow up with the medications that are prescribed. So we have a lot of patients that stay on, you know, antidepressants a lot longer than they should, or they stay on gabapentin a lot longer than they should. Um, so the transition was easy for me because it was just a more natural, holistic way to control and bring autonomy back into a lot of people's lives. Okay. Uh, any specific training or courses that you needed to qualify to become a cannabis nurse? So there's, um, there is a, the American Cannabis Nurses Association offers training through the Cannabis Medical Institute. Mm -hmm. um, they have a online course that you can take. I think it's like $400. Um, if you're American Cannabis Nurses um, Association member, I think the price drops down to like $299. But you get onto this course. It's home-based, so you can do it at your leisure. Um, so that's what I did. And then I try to hit up every single... Um, cannabis sem seminar that's possible. There's um, patients at a time. There's a cannabis nurses network. Um, there's lots of um, education and continuing education courses out there for cannabis now. So um, that's, that's what I do. And that's what we recommend any of our cannabis nurses getting into it is that they become members of the American Cannabis Nurses Association and Cannabis Nurses Network. Is there also a doctor um, in within the Cannabis Nursing Association, or is there? Um, a provider? We do, yeah, we do have um, we do have a couple of doctors that are involved, and we have a lot of nurse practitioners. Nice. Yeah. What has been your biggest challenge thus far? Oh, my biggest challenge, and and every day it's a challenge, is patient advocacy. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we're preaching to deaf ears. Um, sometimes we're preaching to the choir. Um, I do a lot of work with the Drug Alliance Task Force. I um, do a lot of education, um, a lot of training. I train doctors and nurses. Um, I go to pain management clinics. Um, sometimes you get doctors that just don't want to hear about it, you know, um, and that's what's the most frustrating part of all of this is that the older doctors that were brought up in that era, they just don't have the, um, they don't have the desire to learn about it. Um, so sometimes we have medical cannabis patients that are fighting for their rights for their children or for their own personal use and it's falling on deaf ears. And, you know, it's always going to be a challenge, I think, until we start, um, until it becomes descheduled, then I think more doctors won't be so afraid of it. Interesting. Uh, when you say descheduled, what do you mean by that? Well, cannabis is the schedule one drug right now. So a lot of doctors aren't really 
open to or can't recommend cannabis depending on what hospital they work at. Um, mm-hmm. So they can't write prescriptions or recommendations for cannabis in a lot of the facilities that they're employed with mm-hmm. um, because of funding. Um, if you're in with a public hospital, you have a lot of federal funding. Um, so a lot of doctors have their hands tied to that. So once, once medical cannabis um, or marijuana, I guess more people are familiar with that slang term marijuana, um, once it becomes descheduled and off of a schedule one, I think we'll have more and more practitioners open up um, to it. Okay. Any insight or uh, advice for someone interested in becoming a cannabis nurse? Well, I think that you need to get into it for the right reasons. Um, you know, there really isn't a lot of money in cannabis nursing and advocacy. Um, so, building up your clientele, you'd probably need to start into um, working in with the dispensary first. Um, but I wouldn't go into it thinking it's going to be a huge money maker because it's not. Um, we we do this, our group of nurses, we do this really um, as our part to the community in advocating and education. Um so there, so I guess if you're going to get into cannabis nursing, it needs to come from the heart and it needs to come from a place where you're wanting to advocate for autonomy for your patients and not so much because it's, you know, a money train because it's not. All right. So good question here uh, by a viewer. Are you concerned with the role you play in nursing once cannabis becomes legalized? No, because... It doesn't matter if it becomes legalized or not. There's always a need for nurses and every patient deserves a nurse and every patient deserves autonomy. So there's always going to be a need for nurses because people are always sick and people are tired of um, losing their right to choose when it comes to their health care. Okay. And then uh, someone made a comment, it needs to be descheduled. It's really hard to do any testing on it currently because if it's scheduled one drug. That's not necessarily true. There's lots of research that's being conducted now in the United States now that we have the hemp farm bills passed in I think about 27 states. Um, yes, a lot of our research has come from other countries because it's been more um, acceptable in those countries. Israel is the top um, research country um, in the world when it comes to cannabis. But currently, um, there's universities that are conducting um, cannabis trials. Um, UNM, University of New Mexico, is conducting a research panel um, they just did one on opiate um, addiction, and it passed with flying colors. Um, their conclusion there stated that um, cannabis does help with opiate um, addiction. Um, and then there's another one on PTSD that they're conducting. So I think as, as cannabis becomes more and more legalized in other states, we're going to have more and more opportunities for research. Um, and there's no reason why you can't start your own research um, and getting in with a doctor or a university that's open to it um, and start doing um, research panels um, conducted in other states with, um, you know, it takes a village, so you'd have to find a team, but it's becoming more and more common. Um, and research in the United States, I think, we're probably about 10 years behind, unfortunately, but we're we're starting to to do more and more here in the United States. So another viewer asks, have you found doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals are easy to discuss this topic with in states that have it legalized? <clears throat> in states that have it legalized? That's their question. Yes, absolutely. Um, we have a great um, referral base um, with a few physicians in California. Um, We have a couple of physicians that specialize just in pediatrics in California. Um, Here in New Mexico, um, we're not a recreation state yet, but we're a medical state. Um, So we have a lot of doctors that are open to discussing it, but you also have those that aren't. Um, I personally had to go find a different uh, family doctor and the question was asked, do you use illegal 
drugs? And I said, no, but I'm a medical cannabis patient. And she says, oh, well, I'm just going to put you down for illegal drug use. And I said, no, no, you're not, because I'm not an illegal drug user. I'm a medical cannabis patient. There's a difference. And she says, no, not in my mind. So that mentality still exists. So mm-hmm. um, like we discussed earlier, that's the biggest challenge that we have right now is, is opening up those minds. So what makes a nurse successful in your area in terms of characteristics? Well, you need to have um, compassion, which I think if you're a nurse, you already have that as one of your main characteristics. Um, The fortitude um, to step out of your box, because if you're not comfortable with cannabis or you've never used cannabis, but you're just discovering it now, um, you have to get out of your comfort zone. I had to get out of my comfort zone. Um, I wasn't always um, open to any kind of drugs um, outside of the, you know, when when I was raising my kids, for example, I was very strict in, no, you can't, you know, you're not going to smoke pot, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that, because I didn't understand it. You mm-hmm. know, I grew up in the, the Reagan, you know, just say no to drugs era, and that's what we were, you know, we were used to, you know, mm-hmm. no, you're not going to do drugs. You're not going to, you're not going to waste your life. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, well, hold on. I've been, I have been so wrong in so many areas when it comes to cannabis that, um, you know, so I think the biggest challenge and the characteristics that you need is one, um, the fortitude to step out because you're going to be you're going to be uncomfortable, but it's okay. It, it's okay to be uncomfortable. Sometimes we have to be uncomfortable to get comfortable, right? Um, and then um, compassion and your passion for advocacy, because no matter what with cannabis nursing, that's 100% what it's about is fighting for patients' rights. Yeah, I can totally see how you are there on the front lines with your patient side by side fighting with them. You get yeah. stones thrown at you on a daily basis. <laughs> so yeah. I um I have acquired very thick skin in my cannabis advocacy. And um so now I start to build monuments with every stone that's thrown instead of crying. <laughs> Good for you. So what does a typical day look like for you as a cannabis nurse? So my typical day, um, I have a, I have another LPN that helps me, um, but we do scheduling for nursing consulting. Um, we either do it on the phone or in person. Um, so we set up those appointments ahead of time. Um, I do a lot of teaching, so I, I um, kind of gather a lot of my research and put it into um, readable. Um, pieces of information that we can hand out to our customers. Um, We help recommend different products and services. Um, So really that my day is just filled with talking to people. I mean, that's that's pretty much all we do all day long, um, either via phone or in person. Okay. I've got a couple of comments come through. I never phrase it like that, illegal drug user. It just seems to me that people are less likely to be forthcoming if they're feeling judged. And then another comment, I have heard people call marijuana a gateway drug. Is this true? No, it's actually the opposite. It's an exit drug and there's research to show it. All right. Uh, What is the, oh, no, I already asked that. Sorry. What are the most common ailments that you treat? Um, The most common. That question is right. (laughs) Um, I don't treat anything, um, (laughs) but I help mitigating side effects of chronic pain, seizures, Parkinson's, um, epilepsy, um, I guess falls under seizures, um, a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiety, Mm -hmm. PTSD. So that umbrella covers anxiety, depression, insomnia, um, agitation. Um, We treat, not treat, but we see a lot of patients that... um, are just really trying to get off of the opiates. So 
I think probably 90% of our clients are chronic pain users. Mm. All right. And then what do you love most about this specialty? Um, gosh, there's a lot, but I love the advocacy part. I love being able to guide patients um, into a more natural um, alternative. Um, I think the most rewarding is to see our pediatric clients that didn't have many options available to them and mm -hmm. our autistic children that um, weren't talking and with consistent use now they're able to speak um, a few words. Um, I see our Parkinson's patients that are struggling with tremors so badly that they can't even hold a coffee cup. Um, so we've seen those tremors come down. So it's just seen just the specifically with the use of cannabis. Um, mm -hmm. the yeah. Parkinson's? yeah. What's the patho behind that? Do you by chance know? Well, because it's a neuroprotectant. Um, so it helps to repair some of those nerves that are um, involved in Parkinson's. Okay. Um, so it starts to calm the tremors. It won't take them away completely. Like it's not going to take away the shuffling gait and it's not going to just completely get rid of the tremors, but it calms them down enough to the point where they can at least hold a cup and not spill it all over themselves. So, yeah. So seeing, seeing the results of what we're doing mm -hmm. is incredible. Um, our veterans that come in that are, you know, they come in with grocery sacks full of medications and, um, Seeing, seeing those guys and women, seeing them come in and start to titrate off of those medications um, and getting their quality of life back is just, it's amazing for us. So you guys, as uh, your facility, do you do the titrating or you get them on the cannabis and then they in turn go to their PCP for the No, titrate? as a nurse, you cannot. You cannot recommend to to titrate anybody's medication. So what we do is we recommend the cannabis products and then we encourage them always, always to go to their doctor and let them know that, hey, I've, I've started cannabis use, mm -hmm. um, whether it's from hemp or if it's medical cannabis. Um, and here's my journal. So we always recommend that our patients keep a journal of the effects of cannabis, whether it's um, – how their blood pressure is going. If they're, if they're taking blood pressure medications, they need to journal what their blood pressure is at, since they started the cannabis. Because remember what I said, it's self-regulating. So your body's going to start to self-regulate. So your blood pressure um, might start to drop if you're, you know, high, suffer from hypertension. Your blood pressure may start to drop a little bit. And if you're taking those blood pressure medications, it's really important to keep that dialogue open with the doctor so mm -hmm. we never, ever, ever um, titrate medications um, without the consent of their physician, ever. And we tell them that. So what we do is we recommend products that they can take. Mm -hmm. We cross-check it. There's, um, I love Medscape drug interactions because there's a feature that you can plug in cannabis or cannabidiol in there as your second medication. And it'll show you the interactions. If there's significant interactions, then we print out the list and we say, okay, before you can start on this meant on um, CBD or cannabis, you need to give this to your doctor and let them know that there's some interactions and then let the doctor do the titrating off of the, the pharmaceuticals. Great. And um, is there any way that insurance is covering your services at this point? Workers or is comp, it all out of pocket? Um, workers' comp in the state of New Mexico is recognizing medical cannabis. Um, they, <laughs> I should say they're recognizing medical cannabis, but there's a loophole. You can have cannabis-based products that, with no THC. So okay. workers' comp will approve in the state of New Mexico isolate-based CBD. Okay. And the last question here. So if you guys have any other questions, get them in before Dina's done talking about this last one. Um, so what's the hardest part of your specialty? 
Um, the hardest part. I think the hardest part of my specialty is when we get patients that come to us too late in the game. Mm -hmm. They have end stage cancer and they're just grasping at any, anything. Mm -hmm. Um, or people come to us with, they want to cure all, um, and they want us to cure whatever they're going through sure. and we can't, um, you know, unfortunately there's, there's only so much you can do in nursing, right. Mm -hmm. And you can't cure anybody. Um, and when it comes to cannabis, I think there's, there's been so, there's been so much in the news and, in about curing, curing, curing. And that's not what our cannabis is about. We're not about curing. We're help about mitigating side effects. Um, so I think the hardest part is when someone doesn't get the results that they they were expecting in their mind, and then they get upset and they say, well, it didn't cure me. Um, so I guess just changing how people view it, it's, you know, it's not a cure-all. And sometimes CBD doesn't work for some people, just like, you know, some pharmaceuticals don't work for some people. So I think that's the hardest part is um, either losing a patient um, to, to cancer and they didn't, they didn't come in enough time to kind of get that whole wellness um, aspect of it. So maybe they could, um, they could slow down the process um, or just people that get upset with you because, you know, you didn't cure them. So, sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I'd love to hear um, our viewers if you have success stories to share of people that have utilized CBD and had uh, good outcomes from it. I personally have had two pediatric patients, actually three, three pediatric patients that have been seizure free and off of their seizure meds um, transitioned to solely cannabis. Um, that's worked really, really well for them. And it's been a great uh witness it's been awesome to see and then uh some elderly people who have had inks and pains and the salves have been really effective for them so anybody that has um good stories to share you can share or the like way something that didn't work that'd be great do you know do you have any like awesome story you want to share before we end um gosh i i have so many stories um but i think the most the most, uh, I don't even know how to say this. The one, my dad is like the poster child for chronic pain. Okay. So, um, seeing him come off of all of the prescription medications, it took me two years to get him off of his medications with the work of his um, primary care doctor. Sure. But we were able to get him off of pretty much all of his medications. So now all he uses is CBD oil. But my dad was um, diagnosed early on. He had club feet. Um, he had a botched surgery as a child. And um, he just really had a hard time walking. I mean, bone pain that most people cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. And seeing him come off of all of the medications and getting his quality of life back. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Definitely worth it. Well, great story. Thank you so much for giving us your time. There's been tons of viewers in and out asking questions and interacting yeah. with you. It's been awesome. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Sure. Thank you. All right, Drina. Have a great day. You guys have you a good too. one. See ya. Bye.